We're going to have a little chat with Philomena, Philomena Lee and her uh, daughter, Jane Liberton, uh, in a few minutes. And I suppose, uh, suffice to say that there's no one in the room who doesn't know the story of Philomena's last son. Um, but what you see instantly from Philomena, and the minute you read an article about her, uh, you can see how she has overcome her heartbreak. And she does want to show a positive side and she just wants to inspire and implement change. Um, and uh, she somehow manages to be a very content and happy person. Uh, her warmth and is evident and her clear enjoyment and appetite of life is evident and the joy she can bring despite all she's been through. And we're very lucky to have Philomena, I'll tell you, because she's more used to hanging around with Hollywood producers at the moment, such as Harvey Weinstein, not to mention lunch dates with Dame Judy Bench, D Dench even. Um, so thank you, Philomena, for traveling over from London to be with us here tonight and to receive your award. And if you please take your seat on the stage, we'd be very... Please take a seat. Yeah, you can sit, sit in the middle, yes. Sit in the middle there. I'll pour some water for you. You all right? Thank you. Very yeah, so much thank you so there. much thank for you. coming. Now, there's you a bit did. of ishka there for you. Thank you. Sorry, there's that nothing else in it. It's <laughs> needed, isn't it? So, Philomena, as I mentioned there earlier on, you are quite used to these events, really, by now. With the, you've been, we've seen you on the red, gracing the red carpet, yourself and Jane. Uh, how does the fame sit with you? Very frightening at first. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I never in my wildest dreams ever thought, when telling my story originally, mm -hmm. after 50 years keeping it a secret, mm -hmm. I never once ever, ever, ever thought it would be a book, and not let alone a film, mm -hmm. but absolutely. But I've got used to it now a little bit, you know. <clears throat> How difficult was it for you to hold such a secret uh, and not to share it even with your daughter for so long? In the very beginning, it was very difficult because after having to give Anthony up and uh, about four weeks after, because I was so upset and distraught when he was taken away, um, I cried and carried on, and um, I did, there was no way I could leave the home until he was adopted, because there's no way my father just um, didn't want to know. The family never did want to know, like, so I had yeah. to stay there for three and a half years and rear him for three and a half years. But then to have to let him go after that, mm -hmm. it was absolutely devastating. You know? I mean, even to have been sent to the convent initially, and to be disowned by your family, including your father. Uh, how did you keep your wits about you at all? I don't know. It's such a long time ago now, but uh, we had to. I had to keep going. Um, it was a very, very hard birth when he was born. It was quite a hard birth. Mm -hmm. But I had to keep going because I absolutely adored him, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, and it was just, we had such a wonderful, I could see him one hour a day mm -hmm. after working the laundry all day, and then you were allowed to go and see them. But you know, the day, but it, it was, you know... It, it is another time in Irish history, and it's oh, very yes. difficult for us to realise it now, mm -hmm. looking back, but it was quite oppressive, and oh, did you much. feel that you had to be there, that you had to repent, such was the oh, Catholic... We were, we were uh, continually reminded that we were fallen women, mm -hmm. we committed a grave mortal sin, you know, um, and... Of course, we firmly believed it in those days. I was a teenager, and my mother died when I was six. So, of course, my dad put us three girls, my two sisters and I, into a um, uh, convent school in Limerick. And so we were educated there, and we, I stayed there till I was 18. And, of course, never knew anything about what was happening. We just we had a good education, mm -hmm. fair enough, but life was very tough there, too, you know. Yeah. So you, but, and you and you did sign uh, the, the adoption form. I did, but, yes. Uh, you did say you didn't, you know, you, you didn't even remember signing it. But I remind did. us of the day uh, that he was taken. Mm. Well, you see, I had signed him away in the June of 1955. I was called up... Um, one Sunday evening, I went up to a room with a nun, and there was a gentleman there as well. 
So signed this, uh, signed this card. I didn't know what I was signing, of course. I was young and mm -hmm. sort of didn't know much about life in those days. Signed this, and your baby's going to be adopted. And I thought, well, I signed it because I thought we used to keep begging and begging the nuns to, would you please get us a job so we can take the babies with us? But no, no, no. you can't leave here until your baby's adopted. Mm -hmm. And that's what we used to get, you know. So anyway, we were content, I suppose, with that. And we had to, I had to put up with it. There was nowhere mm -hmm. else I could go, you know. Mm. My mother, if my mother had yes. been alive, I probably would. Yeah. But the day he was taken away. Uh, he was taken was away. The day he was taken away. I was working in the laundry at the time. I had to work in the laundry for three and a half years. So it was the day he was taken away, there was one very, there were some very nice nuns. I can't mm. say they were all bad, but this particular young nun, she was very young. And she, over the three and a half years, she used to... Um, take photographs mm -hmm. of Anthony. That's why I've got a lot in the book that was written. Mm -hmm. uh, we weren't allowed to have our photographs taken or anything, but then he was taken away and she came in. She said, quick, quick, she said, come. She said, because they're taking Anthony. He's going, he's going away today. Well, oh God, I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. So I ran up, she ran me up the stairs and looked out the window and the last vision I saw of him, I don't know if, any, if you've seen the film and that, there he was with a face. And it's lived with me all my life, that, oh that one last, and that's all I ever knew. He, he went away 50 years ago, and I never knew what his life was. All I was told was because I cried and carried on so much. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I should be grateful. And that well, what's he, amazing about you is that you have managed, uh, oh, you managed to, to leave and to rebuild a new life for yourself in England. Me. How difficult was that, and what motivated it you to do that? It was very hard in the beginning, because... The actual uh, order of nuns had, had a, um, a convent in Li Liverpool. Mm. And because I cried and carried on so much, three weeks after Anthony had gone, they got me a job over in this, and it was a boys' school of all mm. things. So I worked in this boys' school for two years, and I did all sorts of things, reception, helped yes. the nursing sister, and helped everybody, you know. But you trained as a nurse, and you worked as a, as, a, as a nurse for 30 years. 30 years, uh, in, in a psychiatric hospital, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, I loved every minute of yes. it, yeah. And you say you were bitter uh, against oh, what, what happened. When I After what happened to you, but how did you overcome that bitterness? Well, it, it, how did because you? I think working in psychiatry, mm -hmm. uh, I learned a lot about life, you know, after I was two years in, in Liverpool and then I thought I've got to find myself a career, you know, I had nobody mm -hmm. in England, I didn't know anybody or anything. Mm -hmm. So I found myself a career and got nursing down at St. Albans, which I've stayed ever since mm -hmm. in Hertfordshire. Um, yeah. And I went to work in a psychiatric hospital and... I was still kind of bitter then. It was two years after I'd left the home. Mm. I was still uh, grieving for Anthony, you know. And then gradually over the years, you know, I started to learn more about human nature and people and everything else. I gradually over the years lost my anger because I saw so much anger, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so much trouble and so much sorrow and so much everything mm -hmm. caused through anger, you know. So I said, uh, I just, I've got to let it go. And I let it go, and there I helped myself as well, you know, because I was able to, you know, I never forgot him, because never, ever, ever forgot him over the years, you know. So prayed that every day, every day I used to pray that maybe, please, God, one day I will find him, you know. So you didn't lose your faith, did you? No. Well, I did a little bit. I, so I didn't believe everything mm -hmm. that I was taught, because being taught from 6 to 18, you mm -hmm. just believed every single word you were, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, but I, gradually over the years, I lost it. But in, with it, I've never lost praying in here, you know, mm -hmm. to pray for everybody and anybody. Mm -hmm. But um, I still always wonder that one day, please God, I'll find him, you know. And that's what maybe helped me to keep my faith, yes. you know. I don't know. But maybe. It, the book and the, <coughs> indeed the movie was really unplanned, obviously. I mean, you, did, you didn't even, when you first you told did. Jane, you told her not to tell anyone. I did. <laughs> but you didn't heed her advice, Jane. I was Jane, still I hoping to find her. <laughs> you know, yeah, I did. Yeah, you'd say you didn't heed her advice, obviously. I did initially, but I hadn't realised when Mum first told me the difference in the laws here in Ireland to the United mm -hmm. Kingdom. I just assumed it was the same the world over. If you're adopted at 18, you know, you could had a right to go and find out. Mm -hmm. So obviously, Mum told me, and I first thing I did was, you know, go on go on Google and find out about adopted in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And um, I realised that there were difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, and I came across a group called Adoption Rights Alliance, and basically they gave me the information on how to go tracing for ourselves. Um, which we did, and we found out what happened to Anthony, and then 
then I met the journalist. Um, and we kind of used him in the first place because we wanted the information um, because he'd worked in Washington. He had all the connections there. Mm -hmm. Um, so, no, it was never a conscious effort to have a book written. Um, yeah. Was it a difficult decision for you to put your life story in a book? I mean, you have yeah. been so personal about it and to, I suppose, open up your life to the world. Was it difficult to make that decision or was it an easy one? Um, it wasn't difficult. I never realised it was going to be a book. All the mm. times we were, we were uh, interviewed with Martin over the years, about four or five years, was it, I think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Never, I never thought it was going to be a book, let alone a film. But I mean, um, but then when he'd finished and he said it was going to be a book, didn't he? Yes. Then I said, we, I decided, yes, okay, that because he'd found out about Anthony mm -hmm. and he'd found yes, all his life you story. Found out that which he found out everything that I never that knew. That he had, he had been looking for you. He'd been looking for me. Um, he'd been back several times looking for me. Mm -hmm. And they actually told, the nuns said to him, no, sorry, we can't tell you, she abandoned you at two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. two weeks, they said, and I worked three and a half years in the laundry and reared him for three and a half years. This makes me cry sometimes when I think about it. Mm -hmm. there, I could have met him, because he, he died in 1995. Mm -hmm. And I'd retired at this stage, you know, so I could have met him. I only live in an hour from, Lute, an hour from Dublin, or an hour from two hours from Ross Gray, you know. Mm -hmm. I could have met him. There was an elderly nun that was in the convent, and she said, I used to see him walking around with this Sister Hildegard. He was walking around the grounds with Sister Hildegard. Uh, do you, do you harbour oh. anger towards... I did in the beginning, but it's no point. You mm -hmm. know, I sort of, I'm not an angry person. Mm -hmm. I try not to, which I learned a lot of that in psychiatry. You just couldn't... You had anger with the patients, you know, a lot of the times, mm -hmm. and you had to be calm. You had to stay calm. So mm -hmm. I learned... Uh, to lose my anger, really. How I'm not angry now, but as I say, I found him. That's all I wanted to do in the whole of my it life. Was that consolation for you? Was that oh, some it cross was. When I found out his life story, and um, he had a wonderful life. He had wonderful friends. As you know, he was gay, but mm -hmm. he had a wonderful partner, and I met his partner, and he gave me the whole life story mm -hmm. of him because uh, Anthony knew he was adopted. He was adopted with a little girl, Mary, mm -hmm. so they knew... So uh, he actually, Stephen gave us the whole, we met him in Martin's house. He came over, he was flying, going to um, Hong Kong. So we met him for an hour in London and he was a lovely person, a really nice person. Uh, so do you feel that there's an onus on you now, Philomena, to share this, this story, f to be the voice of the others who, ha who are voiceless? I feel now, I still couldn't come, couldn't come to grips with it at the end. I didn't realise, how could I have, you know... Mm -hmm. But I've, I, I feel now that I've opened the floodgates mm -hmm. for other women, and especially women my age, which were so frightened to come out with the same. And there still are a lot of women left. Mm -hmm. We've heard over, and we were in America last year, lots of, uh, there were a lot of men, women that were adopted out mm -hmm. to America. They used to come and say, well, did you know my mother, and this kind of thing. But I feel as if I've opened the floodgates. Every, the amount of people that come up and say, Oh, you've done wonders. We're so glad. I met my mother. I met, you know, and men come up and say, we found our mother. We've been reunited. Mm -hmm. We have found uh, sisters and brothers we never knew we had, you know. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's a marvel. I think it's wonderful. I couldn't come so to There's no to doubt about it. It is no, an amazing thing. But um, now I realize, mm -hmm. so it's fine. I'm glad I did it, you know. I'm glad so, you did it. Uh, and the Philomena Project, of course, yeah. uh, that, Jane, you were uh, largely involved with. What is the aim of it? The aim of it really was to give people information. Um, I mentioned Adoption Rights Alliance earlier, but obviously the publicity from the film mm -hmm. um, is the public face of Adoption Rights Alliance. But we, as Mum mentioned, we met so many people in America that were adopted from mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Um, and it was to give them information on where they could go, support groups, but also um, help in trying to trace their own families mm -hmm. and find their identities. And you've had a numerous people contact you, yes. is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots mm -hmm. and lots, hundreds. many. Mm -hmm. Hundreds and hundreds of letters and all mm -hmm. sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Never in my wildest did I ever think mm -hmm. that I could, could have started something. You know, and of so course, well. you met the Pope. Oh, I did. At the Vatican. <laughs> we can't forget that. Yes, true. Uh, what, did, you have a, did you have a word with him? Yeah, um, we met the <laughs> 
Well, uh, he understood yes, everything he we did. were saying. He understood. <laughs> we had an interpreter and we also yeah. had Steve Coogan, of course, which was a wonderful man, really, yes. Me meeting up with Steve Coogan. He was fantastic. Yeah. He looked after us the whole... We went out for five days and ended up staying out there five weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with the from, with all the help from um, Mr. Weinstein, Mr. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, mm -hmm. he was a fantastic man too. And I have and to he managed to get. He said first, yeah. he said, "Would you like to meet the Pope?" And I said, "No, not really." Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I said, "Okay, then, yeah, yeah okay, that'd be fine." <laughs> he said, so and then I didn't. I said, "Don't mention that to anybody. Yeah. Don't want to find this out because yeah. they wouldn't believe me." Mm -hmm. But then a few weeks later, he said, "Oh, we booked you in the hotel in Rome, and you're going to see the Pope." And mm -hmm. oh my goodness gracious! Mm -hmm. Of course, you found out that your um, son Anthony, who did pass away at 43, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, that he was senior counsel to the Republican Party. So he yeah. had a quite. How did that make you feel? Oh, fantastic. fantastic. I mean, yeah. really, you know, it's yeah, such amazing. a brain. Yeah. As I say, I say to my three grandsons, you know where your brains come from, Nana. <laughs> <laughs> so it must have come from Nana. Exactly. <laughs> from my son, yeah. yeah. So um, you were 18 years of age when you had him uh, mm. many moons ago, as you say. Many uh, moons. This week in Ireland, there are 18-year-old girls who are finishing their leaving cert. God bless them. And they're heading out into the big wide world. What would be Philomena, Philomena's Lee's uh, words of advice to those young ladies? I, I don't know. I just face life. Take life in your hands. Go, go at it. If you want to achieve something, go for it. Just go for it and mm -hmm. achieve it. And make the most out of your life. Make the most. You, they'll have ups and downs, but... Make the most of your life. That's mm -hmm. all I can say, really, which I, I much, must have done. You managed to do anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. so and certainly, Jane, you must be uh, very happy uh, that it has come to this, all your search uh, from the first day mm -hmm. you started off. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, originally, mm -hmm. when we found out what happened to Anthony, I thought maybe I'd done the wrong thing by opening a can of worms. But mm -hmm. actually, we know what mum now knows what happened to Anthony mm. and you know it's given her a lot of peace she's, as she says she's put him to rest and I always right. think being the, the political creature that he was I think he would be enormously proud of her mm. Mm. like we it. are that's not about <laughs> yes yeah. thank, you. thank you Philomena Lee and Jane Liberton ladies and gentlemen thank you, thank thank you so much you can wait there for a few Thank you so much, Fumina and Jane. Thank you for coming.